Hello, and welcome to episode six of the Physique Development Podcast. Today's episode is our newly structured deep dive. This is where we take a single topic and spend the entire podcast episode breaking it down. So today's topic is training and nutrition while traveling. This has been a frequent question as of late, and we thought we'd dedicate an entire episode to it. So we're going to answer all your questions, concerns, especially as the holiday season is in full swing. We want to say welcome back to all our monthly listeners. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen. You guys have been awesome. And then a big welcome to all our new listeners. If you are new to the show, we are very excited to have you here with us. If you enjoyed today's episode and you would like to support the podcast, please head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you choose to listen and leave us a rating and review. It is very appreciated and does not go unnoticed. So as always, it is our goal not only to supply you, the listener, with valuable insights on topics or questions, but also to plant some seeds for further research and thought. So without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is training and nutrition while traveling. So we're going to have Sue kick it off because she is the queen of traveling and all things nutrition and training and finding the gyms and, and knowing what to know and seemingly just overrides anything that I would ever think of. So we're just going to have her, we're going to have her start it here and, and Alex and I will basically try to, to not mess it up or just <laughs> fill in the, fill in the gaps maybe where she maybe forgets to mention something. So Sue, floor is yours. Well, I love that intro. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> I definitely have had to get good of traveling and making sure nutrition and training is a one. Um, throughout Alex and I's relationship, the first year of it was all long distance. And I was in prep for a portion of that. So I had to get really good at traveling to see Alex, having everything prepped to be able to make sure that I was good to go. Now it was a little bit easier in that sense that he was still dedicated. He is and was dedicated to training and nutrition. So there were some things that I could leave out because I knew he would have access to them. Um, but then I have also done a prep while I have traveled a lot and trained and had to keep everything thing um, under wraps. So um, I've done it all and I've figured out the ins and outs of it. So number one thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm mainly going to touch on nutrition just so that I'm not completely monopolizing this podcast um, and they can touch on training. But real quick, if you haven't been listening to all of the episodes, episode one and three are going to be great to um, have more information on training and traveling just because episode one talks about training from home and episode three it talks about um, training and traveling. So those will be great ones to refer to. Um, and now talking about FDA guidelines and if you are flying. So oftentimes people are just kind of like, can I take food on the plane? And it might be just because you're not used to taking food that you don't realize what the guidelines are. So we do have a YouTube video going over all of the FDA guidelines and that'll be linked in the show notes, especially if you're more of a visual learner and you like to see all of the different things that I talk about and how I pack up my bag when we go ahead and travel. So when it comes to the food portion, the biggest thing you need to think about is liquids. So you just can't have liquids over three ounces. So that's talking about any condiments, um, any oils you may bring, um, or even your ice pack. So your ice packs have to be specialized TSA regulated three ounce ice packs. There are some times where they let you through with bigger ice packs if they're completely frozen, but you never want to run the risk of them taking the ice packs and your food getting ruined because that would be awful and just a huge waste of money and food, which of course we do not want to do. So just knowing that you can take any food with you as long as it is not a liquid. And if it is a liquid, as long as it's under three ounces. So we have a Fitmark bag. We have multiple of them. I bought three ounce, um, ice packs off of Amazon. Fitmark also has three ounce ice packs that you can um, buy if you buy the bag or the containers. And we've had our Fitmark bags for years and they stay in excellent condition. So would highly recommend those um, specifically just because we have experience with them. Um, but being able to pack up everything in that. So we will bulk um, make 
like ground turkey, um, ground beef, um, grill some chicken and then have rice. So a lot of times if I'm going to visit family, I'll just take whatever I've already prepped. I won't make extra because I will normally buy groceries whenever I go and visit family. But if I'm going to a location, like going to a hotel, or even if I'm going to an Airbnb, it's really difficult if you don't have the normal things that you would take to make it. So it might seem like, oh, well, I'll just buy rice while I'm there and I'll cook the rice, but maybe they don't have the right size pan. They don't have a lid. Maybe you don't have a stovetop. There's a lot of ins and outs of that. So I just kind of bring whatever I've prepped um, or being able to have those harder things to make already made. So something like sweet potatoes, or maybe you don't have access to an oven. Yes, you might have access to a microwave, but I do prefer them oven made. So I will go ahead and pack those. But um, something to think about within the liquids is peanut butter and yogurt count as liquids. So those are two things to kind of keep track of. For peanut butter, you can of course take your peanut butter out of the jar, put it in a smaller three ounce container jar. um, Or Jif has like the the little um, like to go packets. And I know a lot of uh, proteins are come are not proteins, peanut butters are coming with like the packets that you can like slide. And I guess I'm thinking of like the protein peanut butter brand. So I know like um, RX bars has their own peanut butter that they have in the squeeze packets. And a few other brands have it like the Uh, Justin's almond butter has it in the squeeze packets as well. So that can be a great option for you. If you are wanting to take oil with you, so we normally take olive oil and or coconut oil. Trader Joe's has coconut oil packs that you can buy because coconut oil is very hard to travel with. So those packs are nice to be able to take with you. For olive oil, I just bought three ounce containers and put the olive oil in it. So I'm good to go to travel with it and put that in my bag as well. But we bring all of our food. We do also have a smaller scale that we slide in the back of the Fitmark container, which you'll be able to see in the YouTube video. Another thing within that scale is if you don't want your food scale battery to die, being able to take out the battery or flip the battery so it's not turning on and off as it's sitting in your bag and then you end up with a dead battery because it's never fun, especially if you don't have a rental car or even if you do have a rental car, to have to go to the store to get the special battery for the uh food scale. Um, But we also, as far as supplements goes, powder supplements and pill supplements, you are able to bring all of those as well. Um, Only recently was the first time that I have ever gotten anything taken from TSA and they did not have a reasoning for me. So I cannot share that reasoning forward as to tell you for your future travels. But for all the years that we've been traveling, that is the first time I've ever gotten anything confiscated, confiscated. Um, So being able to pack all of your supplements, we will normally use baggies, whether they be reusable bags or plastic bags. But if we do use plastic bags, just because we do not want to have excess waste, we will reuse them until basically the zippers break on them when we're traveling. Um, And we'll put lots of bags inside of other bags to make sure that things don't explode within our suitcase. So um, what I do for Alex and I, as I take all of the plastic baggies or um, stasher is a great reusable bag, being able to write what's in it. So whether it is our multivitamin, our fish oil, our magnesium, putting them in those bags and then putting it in all one massive bag. So it's all centralized in one spot. And then for the protein powders and like greens powders um, and what other powders, pre-workouts and intro workouts, being able to put those all in baggies in a bigger bag, especially for those powders, because if those bags end up breaking, um, then you don't want it all over your stuff. Now, we normally do it on our carry-on bag, just because that's how it works out for the stuff that we bring. And it's nice to have that easy access to it. um, And you know how the bag is handled. So it's much less likely for things to explode. But you can definitely check all of these in your checked bags. I'm just talking about through T. PSA. Um, you don't have to have any fear. And especially if you have like your morning supplements with you, and let's say you have a very early morning flight, you maybe don't want to take them at 3 a.m. when you wake up and you want to take them with food. So just putting them in a baggie um, or in a pill container and sliding it in your backpack, you'll be completely fine to go through TSA. I oftentimes will also take a shaker bottle and it's really annoying when you can just like hear the shaker rattle in it uh, when you're like walking around. So I'll take a shaker bottle and then I'll take like my morning supplements and like a bag of protein because I normally will mix up a protein shake if I'm traveling because it's super easy to do Um, and I'll put that in so you can't hear the rattle of the little shaker ball Um, and you have it all compiled in that shaker in the side of your backpack so you don't have to worry about it being all 
messed up or mixed up within your bag. Um, another thing that we always bring while we're traveling is snacks or protein bars. So in my backpack, I normally have like an assortment of protein bars like that stay in there for whenever we travel. Um, and then I'll replenish them as needed. Um, and I will kind of list through a few of our favorite personal ones. Um, so Nugo bars are really great. The Cliff Builder bars are really great. Um, Legion bars. Uh, Alex loves the Outright bars. Um, dive bars bars, Bia bars, um, and RX bars. And there's a few other ones I might be forgetting. Um, but being able to have those in the backpack. So if we, and I try to go for a variety of different protein points as well as different fiber points, just because with travel, I try not to have too high a fiber on that travel day, but I still want to have some, or it's nice when you get to the location of having a fiber source um, in those. And RX bars are a favorite of mine just because they're going to be whole protein bars. They're not going to be using protein powder and they normally have a good amount of fiber in them as well. So you're not eating all protein powder throughout the day or anything like that. Um, so it's a great option to be able to have those. And especially as you're on the plane, um, or like when you're in the airport, food is just so expensive. So it's not even as much as like staying on track, which it's part of that. But it's also not wanting to pay an arm and the leg for something at the airport if I can help it. Um, and sometimes it's just very slim pickings when it comes to airports or things being closed down. As of now, we've gone to many airports where like half of the stores or half of the businesses are closed down. So you never know what you're going to get. Or if you go into a smaller airport, they just don't have that variety. So being able to travel with that variety um, is very great. So we take our food, we take our supplements, we take it all, um, especially if we're traveling for a longer duration of time. Um, or even if we're just going someplace, being able to have smaller allotments of that um, and all packaged up so we are good to go. Now, I do have a highlight on my Instagram profile talking about my um, like bare minimums when it comes to travel. So there are times where I bring like everything under the sun. And that's normally when I go, when we go to visit our parents, either of our parents, but then we also have like a bare minimum. So let's say that we're traveling and like, it's a very short trip, but we want to bring what we we need to bring. We'll bring our multivitamin, our magnesium, our fish oil, um, and then like our greens, protein powder, and maybe some pre-workout. But those are normally non-negotiables when it comes to supplements. And then we have a few other supplements personally that are non-negotiables in Alex and I's life currently. And I know Austin does as well. Um, and I'll have them talk on that. But um, being able to bring the ones that you know, okay, bare minimum, I need this. Maybe you're not packing everything in your pantry or every everything in your supplement um, cabinet, but being able to know, okay, for my body to function the way that I know it's going to be best, especially because you're throwing different variables at your body with travel. So we're always going to have magnesium. We're always going to have fish oil. We're always going to have the multivitamin as like the absolute bare minimum. And then we have a few other that we stack on on top of that. Um, and then other snacks that we might bring with us will be like protein powders, um, protein bars, like I already talked about, rice cakes, um, and then those are normally ones I pack in my bag for easy, easy access or quest chips. Um, and then when it comes to when we get there, something else that I pack is a conduction cooktop. So um, that's something that is a little bit extra <laughs> if you're getting down to it. It 100% is extra of me to bring a cooktop. But most of the time when we are traveling, we're in a um, hotel that doesn't have a cooktop and we just eat a lot of our food on a cooktop. So we get used to it. So it's something that we we just throw in the bag and I got mine from Tasty um, and we can link that in the show notes as well. I got it off of Amazon, but it's the Tasty brand cooktop. Another option is a griddle. Um, those are super easy to pack. Just the space might be a little bit different as far as packing one of those griddles that you can get from Target um, or wherever you may get it. But um, being able to take a cooktop or a griddle is a great option, especially like for Alex and I, if we're having eggs or um, like a quesadilla, things that are just so much better on a cooktop than in a microwave. But as long as a hotel has a microwave and a mini fridge, we're good to go. And so I always request or call ahead to make sure that 
the hotel that we're staying in has a mini fridge or a microwave because it's obviously a lot easier to stay on track when you have access to both of those. So that's the bare minimum that I want from some place is having that microwave and that mini fridge um, and being able to be in a good spot. So most of the time we're good to go with the food that we've brought with us. A lot of times though, we will stop at a grocery store or do like a shipped order or an Instacart order, depending on if we have a rental car or not, of being able to get some of the things that we maybe not couldn't have traveled with or just easier to get while we're there. So being able to run to the store and grab like some minute rice to be able to have while we're there if we run out of the rice or being able to have some easy options for food that would have just been extra to travel with when we knew we were going to the grocery store regardless. Um, Also, we normally get gallons of water just due to depending on where we travel, how good the tap water is, um, being able to have access to that. So Um, We normally will just run by the store or do a shipped order to have some things on hand as well. Um, And especially something like a a cooking spray, if we're bringing the cooktop, we're going to stop and get that instead of traveling with something that's in a can that could, again, explode. I don't want anything exploding on my stuff. Um, And then lastly, or the last thing I'll touch on before I have them weigh in, and then I go through some things, is being able to order from a company if you want to, um, to be able to be prepared. So a lot of meal prep companies are all clear to ship straight to a hotel. And you can always call the hotel beforehand and say like, hey, do you accept packages Um, just to make sure they don't turn it away? Because I have um, gone to a hotel where because it didn't say my name or my room number because I ordered it before I knew my room number. um, And then it was like turned away and I had to like go on a wild goose chase to go and get it. So being able to just call the hotel and be like, I'm expecting a package. It's coming. This is my name. Like, can you hold it? Is always a great option. But last time we traveled, we ordered from Megafit, um, which we have really grown to enjoy their food. They have bulk food, custom meals, and then signature meals, which is great. So you could just order a pound of chicken or a pound of rice, which is really easy to have on hand to build your own meals out. Um, Or you can do custom meals where it's like, okay, I want six ounces of chicken, six ounces of rice, and this vegetable. Or they have their signature meals, like I said. And all of those are great because they come frozen. You're able to throw them in the mini fridge and then just microwave them to heat them up. So um, those are kind of the things that we travel with as well as reusable water bottles so that we're able to fill those up at the airport um, and be able to travel with that. So I'll have these guys weigh in on training and a few other things that I might have missed on nutrition. And then once we circle back around, if I think of anything else, I will definitely weigh in on it. As I said, Um, the queen of all things. So Alex, (laughs) I know you made some notes, man. Um, So Go ahead. Let's, yeah, let's unpack some of all the, <laughs> the things that Sue just touched on for the last 15 minutes or so. Um, okay, so for those of you who are listening who are either driving, I feel kind of bad because you're like, damn, I should be writing all this stuff down because that was a lot of like key things. So um, uh, the, the first thing I want to touch on is if, if, if any of you have watched Kevin Hart's new stand-up, um, in that he talks about how his kids have never not flown private until they go and see their mother. And when they're going through TSA for the first time in their entire life, and his daughter calls him, and uh, I'm ruining this joke for those who have not watched it, sorry. Um, if she calls him bawling because they're taking all of her lotions and her shampoo and her all this because it's over three ounces and she's freaking out. And they're like, what the hell, dad? What, what the hell? I, I don't understand why they're taking all my stuff. Um, so I now am going, going to always envision that every time we go through TSA. And uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be funny. Uh, but nevertheless, that is something obviously to, to pay attention to. Other things to pay attention to is scoping out restaurants around your uh, hotel or your Airbnb, uh, because there are certainly going to be times while you're traveling that you're not going to want to necessarily prepare the meals, but you also want to stay on track. So finding things that you can, uh, find the nutritional labels on is going to be helpful. Like if you have a Chipotle, if you have uh, Qdoba around there, obviously that's going to be very easy, but uh, I'm sure as you're traveling, uh, whether it be for leisure or for work, you're going to want to try some different things and probably not eat at the same places that you would be at home. So being able to find places that are near and uh, around your uh, where you're staying is going to be important um, as you are traveling. And I think that the the other thing that um, 
it, the, the big thing within travel is just preparation, as you can tell from with Sue, like it's a it's a full day thing leading into us leaving. Like it's it's not this this quick like, oh, I'm just going to scramble and put all this together the the morning before we hop on a flight. It is she's doing this the the day before she has a, a, a laundry list of things that she goes through um, and is is looking down upon me as I pack the day before we leave or the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the hour before we leave type situation. Um, so that's the the big thing is that it's not something you can just scramble and throw together. It's a, a lot of like 24 hours ahead of time preparation. Um, and same goes for for scoping out the gyms beforehand um, and uh, calling the, the hotel to ensure that you do have a fridge that you have whatever is needed. Um, is very very big and then the cooktop that sue uh, spoke on caring for that uh, it's not going to it's too large for you to put on your your carry-on you can fit it in a carry-on like hard-sided bag but i don't think you can take it through tsa because of like the batteries in it and such like i the specifics of how tsa decides that i'm not positive but we can fit it in a s- right t- uh TSA size check bag, but we normally check it. But you have to be careful because it is glass. Top. It is glass. So you need to if you do get it, it's not something you're just going to put in there and, and not be like covered in a sweatshirt or like a blanket or something of that nature, too, because, you know, those check bags are just getting flung like footballs out there. If they can, so <laughs> Dude, Aaron Rodgers is throwing those. They, they uh, hire Aaron Rodgers for the day and just throw these. Oh, easily. Yeah. They just fling yeah. those things. Um, and we've you know, we've we've lost one as as some of you may have seen on Sue's story. I mean they've wow. they've shattered it. So um, <laughs> just something to to know about. But yeah, what 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 thoughts do you have, Austin? Yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll unpack some of that as well. Um, just a couple of things that I can say for myself that really pop up as all of us here travel a ton. Um, I travel a little less dedicated. Uh, <laughs> which is, it just is what it is. Right. Um, and different, different goals, uh, sort of elicit different sort of preparation and forethought, uh, on where you're traveling and what's important to you. And, and regardless, and I want to mention this, um, one to kind of, you know, continuously take shots at myself because why not? But two, I I think it's important because no matter your goal, it, it, it's, when you travel, especially if you travel a lot, but even if you don't travel a lot, traveling can really be a great experience or it can really throw you off. Um, and so depending on like how busy you are when you're traveling or if it's leisure or how you, you know, want to feel, even if it's like a, a relaxing holiday or, or something like that, or like if you're going to see family or whatever it is, if your sleep, digestion, um, mental health, like everything that you, you typically have in check routine structure is completely thrown for a loop when you, when you're gone. And if you're gone for, you know, more than two or three days, it really does pay to be prepared. It really does pay to take things that, you know, help you function and and just be a normal human throughout your, your normal day. And so taking notes, you know, even if you're someone who's very prepared, um, you know, like Sue, or if you're someone who is kind of just like, you're just flying by, you know, flying by your seat. It's a matter of how do I want to feel when I'm traveling? And then do I want to, you know, do I have a lot of work to do or do I want to be focused? And so a couple things for me that really stand out that have, have really made the difference, um, when traveling has been one, having travel supplements and, sort of at home supplements. Um, so what I mean by this is basically when you're looking at, like, I I know if I'm going on a longer trip in a trip that is going to take some also for me, like strategic planning of space. Uh, so like a lot of trips that I'm only taking, like I have my backpack and that's like all I take, or it's (laughs) my wife and I have a backpack a piece and we split a carry on. You obviously have a lot less room. And so, I'm trying to prepare, like, what's our packing situation? So if like you're taking Frontier or Spirit, that, I mean, you're wanting to take the least amount of baggage possible. If you're taking (laughs) Southwest, take a million bags. They're all free. doesn't matter. (laughs) Um, So I think that should, 
you know, that, that may weigh into your, um, your preparedness of travel, but, or what you're going to take with you. But in that, the travel supplements, like if you're at home, you know, trying to cut costs and, and trying to figure out what's the most efficient, cost-effective way of, of getting these supplements. So it probably is cheaper to buy some supplements separately and just kind of make your own stack of things, right? So like for my brain health um, supplementation or uh, just overall general multivitamin or just daily health supplements, there, you know, if you look at my supplements, there's like, I'm not taking that many, like if you, if they were all compact into one supplement or like three or four supplements, it wouldn't seem that asinine. But because I sort of break it up, you know, it can, it can look kind of crazy, but it's just, I'm, I'm sort of unpacking what these larger supplement brands have done for us and, and make it convenient for us. And so when traveling, I try to prepare, if I know I'm going for a longer trip, I buy these supplements ahead of time. And instead of having, you know, four supplements that I take for brain health, I just get one supplement that I can pack that has all those ingredients in it. Right. And it may not be the, to the right, like to the max dosage you're used to taking or the, the whatever, but knowing that you have that, knowing that it's going to stay within your sort of regimen, knowing that you're going to, you're going to be able to, to have it when you travel and uh, be able to stay focused and in, in, in a good headspace or, or whatever it is. And for me, like brain health is, is top priority. Um, and then next is going to be digestion and, and overall sleep. Right. So um, those are two things like my brain health supplements, multivitamin, fish oil, um, and my, uh, sleep supplementation, which you can get strategic and you buy sort of pr proprietary blend almost gets a bad rap now, but you can almost buy these proprietary, like these combined supplement supplements, right? So like if you look at Legion's multivitamin, there's like 45 things in that thing, <laughs> which it's covering a lot of bases, which that's a very cost effective and a travel efficient supplement, right? Because you're getting a lot of things, you're getting magnesium, you're getting your B vitamins, you're getting zinc, you're getting everything, right? You're getting so many different things. Um, even ashwagandha, like you're getting some, some herbal stuff as well. And so like, that's a great supplement that I'd recommend. And then you can pack it as Sue told you, don't pack the bottle pack like in baggies because those, those can be smashed in safe space. Um, but the next thing other than supplementation, just supplementation is one of those like extra things, but it does make a difference, especially in my life. And I know it does in Alex and Sue's. The next thing is location scouting for whole food sources. And if you travel a ton, or if, again, if you don't travel a ton and you're, but you're nor you're used to eating a certain way and you're, you're used to having good digestion, you kind of just take it for granted. The first time your digestion is completely wrecked when you travel, it's like when you get sick, the only thing you hope for <clears throat> is your health. <clears throat> and like when you're traveling, if you have bad digestion or you can't sleep or, or whatever, all you hope for is that your digestion improves and you can go to sleep and have a good sound night of sleep, right? Uh, and the big thing there being digestion, because if our digestion's off, we feel off, everything's off, um, at least for me. So location scouting for whole food options is such a big thing. And you can be strategic on where you're finding your hotel. Um, and it's so easy nowadays to, to location scout a map and check the area, be sure that are you going to have a rental car? Are you not going to have a rental car? This is something I have to always take into account. Like if I travel with my wife, if she's doing some work, um, we have, you know, we have one rental car, but I kind of get left at the hotel room to work, but she takes the car and I'm kind of left there of like, okay, I got to be sure things are within walking distance to go get whole food sources. That way I'm not just pounding beef jerky and taking out a, <laughs> a second mortgage on my house to afford beef jerky. Um, so <laughs> being sure that being sure that, uh, your location, location scouting for whole food sources is a really, really good idea. Um, and give yourself options, you know, give yourself, depending on your le uh, level of tracking or, or not tracking. Um, but give yourself really good options to choose from. Don't just rely on a gas station or, um, anything like that because you're gonna really regret that decision. Um, so those are my two things as far as the, the nutrition or supplementation, supplementation side of things It's just understand regardless of your like quote unquote dedication level, just feeling good while you travel 
makes the trip so much better, right? And there are ways that you can sort of ramp up your preparedness or what you're taking or ramp down what you're taking. Um, but it, it is important to sort of cover your bases, be sure you are feeling good. Um, and especially on the nutritional side of things, the supplementation side of things with digestion, sleep, um, brain health and all of those things. And there are just really strategic, easy ways to do that. So um, that's all I had to add there. Um, and then we'll kind of move on to the training segment. If Alex, you had some, yeah. or Sue. I, I do want to add a few more things with the nutrition because they reminded me as they were talking. But um, one thing is that we do have a fast food ebook on the physique development website. So if you're ever traveling and you're trying to stay on track, I know fast food, you might be like, well, that's not the best option. I mean, it is a good option. It's not the worst. And a lot of people demonize fast food. Of course, everything should be had in moderation, but it's a great, it has all the major chain um, fast food restaurants and things that you can order that are more macro friendly or how to change things to make it fit your macros better. The other thing I'll say, um, and just re really glad that Austin mentioned this is yes, it's extremely tedious to pack all these things. And Alex has heard me complain about it a million and one times because like, I know how much better it makes us feel once we're there, but packing everything up, like Alex said, is like the day before of me sitting there, like counting out how many days we're going to be done, how many supplements we need to bring, what that looks like, putting everything in bags, making sure it fits in the bigger bag. Like it's extremely tedious. And um, my parents will sometimes make jokes about like, oh, you're bringing your whole kitchen with you or you're doing X, Y, and Z. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to optimize how I feel while I'm there. Because when you're traveling, things are thrown off. Your schedule is different. Your bathroom routine is different. Your accessibility to things is different. Your everything is different. And if you're not really prioritizing and optimizing the things that you want to stay consistent, then everything's going to be off and you're not going to feel good. And especially digestion for me, I have sensitive digestion. And so if I am in a bad place with digestion, I'm no fun to be around. I don't feel good. I break out more um, food, like I'm not absorbing the nutrients. And I just it's just I feel bad the whole time. So being able to optimize that by bringing certain supplements or making sure that I'm having food sources that I'm used to. So if I am going to a restaurant that I'm excited to try because I'm in a new area, I ex at least have consistency around it um, so that that helps me. Because uh, for me, eating out for every single meal I do not feel good doing that. I like being able to eat out. I like being able to have meals out. And it's not something where I'm like worried about the macros. It's nothing to do with that. It's the fact that I just don't feel good when I eat out multiple times a day, multiple days in a row. And I notice that about myself. And so that's why we pack the food. Of course, to some degree, it's to stay on track and to hit macros, especially if you're in prep, whatever it may be. But it's also a feeling good on a day-to-day -day basis and making sure that that is absolutely optimized because that's going to make the travel that much more en enjoyable. Um, and then another thing within packing food is while we might have more of a variety while we're home, when we travel, we do try to pack the bare minimum with food. So packing sources, that's going to be easy. Okay. Rice, we're going to use rice for a multitude of different meals. We're going to use ground beef for a multitude of different meals. We're going to be able to use the sweet potato with a chicken meal, with a beef meal, with a rice meal, like we can use these things. So we don't bring a lot of the extra flair. It's just kind of like, how, how many meals can I use this food in? And like, it has to reach a certain threshold for me to be able to bring that food. Um, so that's another thing within building the meals. So don't feel like, oh, I normally have this meal that requires 17 ingredients, I need to bring all of them. Okay, let's pick meals that have two to three four or five ingredients that can also be used in other meals. Um, so that's going to help with packing and just your space. Um, another thing within traveling and digestion is going to be lowering caffeine and fiber the day before and the day of you travel is going to be helpful for your digestion, um, as well as increasing water and making sure that's in a good spot. And while we're on the subject of digestion, we also sometimes travel with a product called Smooth Move, um, which you've probably heard of the tea before. They also have it in capsules, which is great to 
be able to get. You can get it at Target or other locations. Um, it's at Whole Foods and stuff. But um, the capsules are great. They normally take 10 to 12 hours to work. So especially if I know like my routine is going to be off, I will take it the day before. And the serving size is three capsules. And I'll normally take one to two just because I don't want to get in a situation where I cannot control it. Um, but it's never take three. <laughs> Alex <laughs> found that out the hard way. <laughs> he literally was like, he read the serving size and he was like, I took three the other day. It was not good. No, I was like, I would yeah, not advise that three. for anyone. I would just start with one and just hope for the best. And then if one doesn't work, do not venture to three. Still go to two. <laughs> and this is going to be a very mild lax. It does say laxative not on the three. container. And so I want to vocalize that just because like, it's not something where it's like, oh, just take a laxative every time you can't go to the bathroom. Like you want to fix the root issue, of course. Um, this is one that is going to be with herbs that are going to be helpful. And so it's a very mild laxative and it's good to be able to smoothly move things through your digestive tract. So um, especially if you, for me, I'm someone who like my back bathroom routine. Like if I'm off that routine, then I have a hard time going to the bathroom. So I need to like a quiet environment. I need to be like the door, like behind the door, all that jazz. And so if I know that routine is going to be off and I can't go to the bathroom when I normally would, being able to have that is helpful. So then I'm not stressing about not going to the bathroom and then not being able to go to the bathroom more and it turning into a whole cycle. Another thing is we have a travel squatty potty. So if you are team squatty potty and you're worried about traveling without it. They do make a travel version that you can fold up and packs really nicely. Um, so just being able to pack food that works for many meals, lowering that caffeine and fiber the day before and the day of increasing water. And then um, another thing that I'll touch on, especially with the holidays coming up is when you're traveling to see family, and that's going to be a little bit different than you going to a hotel, scouting out these different places. So whenever we go to visit my family, my mom normally asks a few days before um, if I need anything from the grocery store. So she is a godsend for that. Um, but other times we'll just stop by the grocery store or we'll do like a click list just so we're able to spend the most time with family, depending on if we if we have car access, whatever that may be. Um, and then what we'll do is I will kind of give suggestions for food places that I've already kind of scouted out the menu. And I know that there's something that I can eat or that I can enjoy and still feel good about it. Um, and then we will often have the conversation with my family about like, okay, how strict are you being? What does that look like for family meals? Um, and so like if they're having burgers, they'll order their normal beef and I'll just be like, hey, can you buy some leaner beef for me? And then I can sit and have burgers and enjoy everything with everyone without feeling like I'm pushing myself off track. So never be ashamed or embarrassed to be able to talk about that with your parents um, or your family members. I also will often offer to cook. So I'm able to make a meal for everyone and maybe know the macros of um, or just being able to plan those meals together in advance. So you know, hey, we're going to have burgers, I'm going to go ahead and get that leaner beef. Um, and maybe I want to have this different kind of fry, whatever it may be being able to just have those discussions and plan ahead a little bit and you should be all set to go with food so yeah and something to add with that is that you know with with sue's mom with with when we visit my parents they do the same thing is that they ask beforehand and it's a conversation that you need to have with them you know before you get there and and people are not going to know that you're in that situation unless you vocalize that to them as much as you want them to read your mind it's not going to happen um so being vocal with them having conversation and saying that this is important to you your your family loves you like they, they, they want what you want and, and what's going to make you happy and if you know, tracking your food and all those different things make you happy, then they're going to be on board with that as it's, if you convey that message to them. Um, and a, another disclaimer that I want to add to all this is that um, I, I'm, I can hear people right now saying, uh, I'm going on vacation at some point, And, you know, this is kind of daunting for me to take on it. And I'm going on vacation. And, you know, Sue and I go on vacation here in two weeks. And I, I certainly mm -hmm. do not believe that we're going to pack all of these things. This nope. is, uh, you know, this is something that we've we've traveled a good bit this year um, for for work, and we've we've packed accordingly for that. But with vacation, like we're going to relax, and so we're certainly not going to be packing all of that food every time. And you have to be honest with yourself yourself of of what you want to prioritize for that specific trip like if you want to be more lax understand that you know, your progress your scale weight may be a little up when you come home and all these different things like 
roll with the punches. It's all going to be okay. Um, but go in with the, the proper intentions. Don't go on vacation, have a, have a ball, drink quite a bit, eat quite a bit and, and think you're going to come back with this six pack and <laughs> feeling amazing. Like you're going to feel a little off and it's going to take some time, but it's a, it's always an exchange. Like you're always making a transaction of some sort with the decisions that you're making. So yeah. Uh, and Austin, if you want to dig into some training while you're traveling, let's, uh, let's go there. Yeah. Um, and so this, this ties in is really well to training while traveling, um, and just taking care of yourself while traveling. So, um, if you guys are again, going somewhere where, you know, again, it, it kind of depends on am I going somewhere for work? Am I going somewhere for <clears throat> leisure? Am I going somewhere for to visit my, my, uh, family? Am I going somewhere, uh, for just straight holiday relaxation, right? All these are going to kind of depend. Um, but the, the largest thing is going to be taking self-responsibility, taking ownership of this part of it, because as you're, as we're all learning, adulthood can be a lonely zero sum game of like, why did no one do this for me? And it's like, oh shit. Cause I was responsible to do it. I, I was responsible for it. Right. And the days of, oh, well, that's just taken care of is no, are no, you know, are no more. Uh, so it's one of those things where, you know, depending on your age, but regardless of your age, um, whether you're 20, 25, 30, 45, 50, it doesn't matter. This is something you need to take self-responsibility for. Um, and so taking some self-responsibility proactively really just does make your life better. And so with training, if the first step I like to, to do is do some research on, um, you know, what's my, what's the best cost-effective option for where I'm staying. Am I staying in an Airbnb? Um, I've noticed that Airbnb is actually more expensive right now than hotels are uh, in most most places. And so, all right, if I'm staying, am I, am I staying in Airbnb one or am I staying at a hotel? Or do I have a rental car? Um, or do, am I going to rely on Uber, which can get very, very expensive? Oh. So, yeah. So depending on what you're doing and what your plan is, and how many times, again, and why you're traveling. So how many times a week are you looking to train? Which, as Alex mentioned, managing expectations during these travel stints are is huge. Um, so if you're wanting to go for relaxation, don't expect yourself to just be on track and crushing life uh, or, or crushing your progress. You could be crushing life, but um, you may not be crushing your progress. So that's going to be a big thing as well. So context does matter here uh, is basically what I'm getting at. And so depending on where you're staying, so with training, depending on where you're staying. So if you're staying in Airbnb, where are the closest gyms? Do some research. It's very easy to get on Google Maps and do this, you know, do this on your computer, do this on your phone, figure out where you're staying, figure out one kind of the vicinity of that Airbnb if you're staying there or the vicinity of your hotel. Um, and if you are staying at a hotel, call ahead and figure out what's one, how their gym's currently working. As we are in the pandemic period, every gym. So I've been to, I think four hotels during this, uh, pandemic period. And two of which said their gym was open, but it really wasn't open. Um, and then the other two were by appointment only. Right. So you had, it could only be you and potentially one other person or just you in there. So you had to book a time. Um, and then it's trying to figure out what's in that gym. Right. So you've, you've been to hotels where there's just a treadmill, dumbbells up to 10 pounds and like a BOSU <laughs> ball. And you're like, I can't do, it. I might as well just go for a walk at this point. Um, yeah. And so it's calling ahead, trying to figure that out, look at photos, do some research because again, the difference between having the situation that's much better for you, that's going to put you in a greater spot with your routine and structure, um, mental health, physical health, it could be a matter of just looking at five different hotel options, which are usually honestly around this time are generally going to be around the same price. Um, or it could be a difference of $50 or a hundred dollars, but from experience, 
saving $50 on your hotel room and spending $100 on Uber and $200 on guest passes at gyms, did you actually save $50 on your hotel, right? Like, did you actually save money? No, you spent more money and you were more frustrated. It took you more time to actually do the job and you have to take into account all of that stuff as well. Um, and so when finding a gym, figuring out what you want to do, um, that's going to be probably the biggest thing is being prepared, take self-responsibility and either call ahead, do some research, figure out what their policy is. Are they letting people in the gym, even if they say it's open, um, and figure out what's in the gym. Uh, Alex, do you have anything to add there as far as yeah, buying uh, a gym? I, yeah, I think that, um, I mean, the gym itself is generally one of my favorite aspects of our travel and finding little like hole in the wall or very unique gyms is kind of what I enjoy the most. So, um, not enjoy the most, but something I enjoy, um, is, is finding those gyms with maybe some equipment that I've not used before. And that's something else with the, the training itself is that, um, as much as I would love to pick, try to find places with the same equipment and things of that nature, I also want to venture and, and play with new equipment. I'm, I'm a, a kid in a candy store type situation. Um, when we go to different gyms and trying different equipment that I, I don't have at home. Um, so I like to really scope that out. And something that we ask of physique development clients, uh, as we do custom training for everyone is that if you are traveling, uh, scope things out and get the information to your, your coach as soon as, as possible. Uh, the, the worst thing for us is that a client is traveling on a Monday and they get us well, uh, I'll be in a hotel on uh, this, like this whole week. Um, I need programming and I don't really know what's there. It's like, well, you know, you're, you're kind of on your own there. Cause I also mm -hmm. can't read your mind of where you're staying and all those different things. So if you can, you know, get out in front of it and say, Hey, I'm going to be training at this gym. Here's a link to it. Or here's the equipment that's going to be available. I'll be able to either keep up with my current training, or I want to try some of these new pieces that are here. If you can kind of, uh, you know, work these in or adjust some of the training for that. Um, that's always the, the biggest blessing. I always want to give like a virtual hug every time a client sends that, the, that information that far in advance. Um, and yeah, so that's the, the main thing, but yeah, scoping it out beforehand is, is huge. And then being flexible, uh, understanding that the progression of it is not going to be, you know, spot on the, the, even if it's the same piece of equipment, like it's the, the same Cybex leg extension, uh, that you use at home at your home gym at this, you know, maybe you're, you're traveling across the country or something. And it, it could feel completely different. It could have been the the last time that it was, um, what's the word I'm calibrated. looking for? Yeah, calibrated. Um, could have been, you know, years ago. And so it could just be in horrible shape. And you're like, damn, this feels bad. And it's like, it's not you. It is actually the machine. <laughs> so it's like keeping those things in mind is is very important. Yeah. And like they, I'm sorry, were you done? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, that was the end of a sentence, but was it? Um, so the, another thing within traveling, like they've both touched on is thinking about the environment and what you're traveling in and what that looks like for like how much on track, so to speak, you want to stay. So if I, for, for all of us, we enjoy movement and it's not so much of like, I need to train or the world's over. If I don't hit my macros, the world's over. It's I feel best when I'm training and fueling my body. And that's the end of it. That's why when we're traveling. And another thing is since we all three travel for work so much, we can't just fly by the seat of our pants always. Now, maybe we personally could because we're still going to make the better decisions and still be able to piece part things together. But at the end of the day, like if you're not prepared and you go into a situation and then you're just off, like that can be very, very difficult to do. So being able to know like movement makes me feel good. The food that I eat makes me feel good. When I travel, I want to feel my best. And because I travel so often, I can't use it always as an excuse to not follow the plan. Um, so if we just every time we traveled this year, didn't follow the plan, that would be a big portion of the year that we're not on plan. Yeah. And so like Austin said, take responsibility of what you want to accomplish and what that looks like. And like Alex mentioned, we're going to be going on vacation 
the bare minimum will probably bring like fish oil, multivitamin and magnesium, and then probably like nothing else except some protein bars that are already in my backpack, because we're going to go, we're going to go and enjoy the food. And we're going to be in such a parasympathetic state that I sure as hell hope that we don't have any issues within travel digestion, because we're just going to be so relaxed, we don't even know how to feel about ourselves. Um, But being able to look at that and say, hey, is it a priority for me to train while I'm traveling? And someone listening might be like, well, I only get to see my family once a year during the holidays. I'm not going to take away time from them and go and train and like not eat with them. And that's a completely okay decision to make. It's just making that decision and feeling confident in that decision and moving forward with that. And then for me, if I have cardio, instead of going to the gym and spending time away from my family and doing cardio, I'm just like, hey, want to go on a walk mom and being able to spend time, hang out with my mom and go on that walk. And maybe we're going out to eat and they're like, oh, let's eat here. And I'm like, oh, could we eat here instead? Everyone's like, oh yeah, that place is great. So being able to make those decisions and speak up for yourself when you want to, um, but also being okay when you're making a decision that might not be the norm decision. So with all of this, pick and choose what you need from this podcast to be able to be successful in your next travel and your next trip and your next time that you leave because you don't need to do everything that I do when I travel. And that is very extra. Like even for me to say like, it is extremely extra. I am not, um, necessarily as extra as some of our friends. We do have a friend who brings his own pots and pans and has an own bag just for everything. Um, but I guess I do bring my own pan when I bring the yeah, cooktop. So just as extra I'm as just as extra. <laughs> uh, but that's something that I've made the decision to be that extra and to have everything and to ha- mimic things as much as I can. But there's many times that we go on trips that I make the decision to not be that extra. So make the decision that you need to make. Take the information from the podcast and apply it how you need to. All of these podcast episodes aren't meant for you hard and fast to just follow exactly what we say to do. It should be able to learn from it and apply how you need it to your life to be able to see the benefit that you need from it. So being able to carry that forward in this and not think, oh, well, Sue told me that she tracks all of her food and hits the gym every time she's away that I need to do that or I'm not fit enough or I'm not dedicated enough or my goals don't matter because that's not true at all. It's being able to see the context and applying it in the way that makes the most sense, but also having all the information from this podcast to know if you want to do everything, there is a will and there is a way to do so. Yeah. And and to I I can also hear people uh, where like with their family uh, getting uh, in a situation where they're getting a hard time where all three of us on this podcast live in families that that like to give a little bit of a hard time if <laughs> uh, you say you want to eat better and they'll roast you a little bit. Um, my my <laughs> my keynotes there is, is dish that shit back. Give I mean, give that back and and, and be thick skinned um, and, and let them hear it a little bit too, to where um, you 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 let them know that this is important to you and and um, don't waver in, in your decision and uh, they'll they'll calm down. And even if they, they keep going, like they're going to get bored because it's not getting under your skin. So they'll be like, ah, yeah, I'll get them for something else later. I would say like the worst I ever feel when traveling is when I give in to peer pressure that I didn't want to. Yeah. Like I'm fine if I made the decision of my own free will to like either, okay, I'm not going to track today. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, or I'm going to skip the gym. Like I'm fine if I've made that decision, but I feel the worst when like I've allowed someone to guilt me into doing something that I did not want to do. So for example, like Alex just said, our families dish it out and my dad will make jokes here and there. They're extremely supportive of what we want to do, but they'll be like, oh, going back to the gym or when are you going to eat normal food is something that my dad said the last time. And I was just like, I'm eating the way that suits me. And that's like a few years ago, I would have never been able to have that conversation or say that I would have just been like, Oh, what do you want me to eat for you to feel the most comfortable, but being able to realize like your comfort at the end of the day and what you feel secure in doing is what matters. So if they're going to dish it out or if they're going to make a joke, like make your decision and feel firm in that decision instead of coming back from the trip and being like, I should have done this. I could have done this. I wish I did this. It's I made this decision and now I have to 
live with it because that decision is made. So um, making the decision that you feel comfortable in, um, but being able to have those conversations with family or friends if you need to. Um, And the podcast with Mackenzie that you guys will be able to hear one of our assistant coaches. um, We talked about how she had to travel for work and she um, was like, the one of the pre- people she went with got a rental car and she was like, if you drive me to the gym, then I'll watch Bachelorette with you. And so that was the trade off of no one was going to go to the gym with her, but she needed a ride. And this person really wanted to watch Bachelorette. And I guess Mackenzie had said no earlier. And she was like, if you drive me and pick me up from the gym, I will do whatever with my other free time. And so being able to make bargains like that and realizing like you can make a decision of your own free will, or if you want to get things done before people wake up, that's what we do often when we travel is wake up early to either get work done or training or something out of the way. So I'm able to maximize the amount of time I'm with other people. Yeah. And I just to finish this out and echo what you both have been talking about. It's from my own experience, it's been in the, the conversations I'm having with clients, um, you know, now and, and through all the holidays, it's lean in, you know, lean into what your family needs, understand what your family needs, know your family's trigger points and it's your responsibility to work around those. It's not, it's, it's no one else's responsibility. Um, and understand, again, understanding those trigger points do help because sometimes you can sort of circumvent an awkward situation. You can circum again, like as Sue was saying, like you can offer to cook the meal or you can offer to go to the store and buy the groceries. Or if it's burgers, you can, if they are super keen on 70, 30 or 80, 20 beef, and you know, 96, four is your jam go to the store or just put on the list, like, please get this. And I'm down for everything else in the meal. We won't skip a beat. I just, I really ask you to do this for me. And again, as I was say, your family loves you. If your family doesn't love you, you're probably not visiting them. So <laughs> this is true. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> you're not probably not going to see them. Let's be honest. Yeah. So in that lean in, um, and don't make this a burden on them. They didn't ask for this. You did right? This is your life. This is your, you need to take self-responsibility for that. You need to take ownership of that. And depending on your dedication level, again, take what you need from this. If you're someone just, just a lifestyle person and, and you're listening to this and you don't compete, you don't care about any of that, then don't continue to not care about it. Continue to care about it when you're home and go visit your family, try to make good, healthy choices. But you can take some of this information and factor it in. Again, one of the things that we mentioned at the start of every podcast episode is planting seeds for further research and thought. We're just here to plant some seeds. We're just here to sort of motivate you or educate you enough to like, go, go learn, go experience, go find out for yourself. And so take what you need from this. But again, leaning in, understanding your family's trigger points. Um, like from my own experience, I, I understand my family's trigger points. I understand in certain situations, I'm going to, I'm going to trigger a response. Either it's going to be a backhanded comment, or it's going to be an insecurity that's given, or someone's going to project something onto me. How I take that's up to me. How you take that is completely up to you. And I'll tell you from experience, the times where I've just been able to take a step back, take a deep breath, take a step back and realize that that fairly often is a projection of an insecurity they have about either decisions they're making in the current moment or decisions they're making uh, just throughout their life in general. And that's a moment where you can have a very meaningful conversation. If it's your drunk uncle who weirds you out, screw that guy. Um, <laughs> let him be what he wants to be. Let him make all the comments he wants to make, right? I think we all have that weird drunk uncle. But as far as your immediate family, you really, really care about um, and that mean a lot to you and you don't want to disappoint them. Or you don't want to make this a burden on them. Have these conversations. No one knows what you're thinking until you communicate it. Your, your family is not aware of this. I, I come from a very, very, very supportive family, just like Alex and Sue do. And a, a, a family that would bend over backwards to, to meet that need of mine. But it's also up to me to take that responsibility and figure out all this shit on my own, not make this a burden. So if they have a favorite restaurant, that's on me to figure out what I want there. That's on me. Is it trackable? Am I in prep? Do I have something coming up? What's my dedication level? 
can I circumvent this? Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll do something else, right? And we'll talk about things in other podcasts and you can take stuff from, from past podcasts. But again, it's leaning into that, communicating that. Um, and another thing, uh, and the last thing that I, I want to mention here is if you're in a relationship, get that partner on your side and have that communicate, like communicate with that partner. That way they're not on the other team, right? I, I think one of the, one of the toughest things, and, and thankfully I know, you know, Alex and Sue, I can speak for them in the sense they're on each other's team. Um, my wife is on my team and she has been from the beginning, but because we've had these conversations, right? Um, early, early on in, in my relationship um, with my wife, it was, I was in prep. I was going through prep. I was deep in, uh, I was like, that was one of the most important shows to me that I'd, I'd had up at that point. And I was prepping through holidays. I was prepping through all these family events. And the conversations we were having were, hey, this is how I'm going to approach this. This is my experience. These are the comments I know are going to kind of come up. All I ask is that just you're on my side here. You kind of explain to your parents that this, this isn't hard. Like I'm, this isn't personal. I don't not want to eat your food um, or eat their food. You know, if they make comments to you or kind of take you to the side and kind of mention something like, is he okay? Yeah, <laughs> he's fine. He's maybe kind of weird, but hell, we're all weird. <laughs> um, he just is particular with these sort of things, right? And being sure that you're having that communication with your partner, your families, you're taking on that burden, not them. You're not making them take on that burden. And if you're making these decisions and these choices to be a little bit more strict or structured during these uh, holiday seasons or these moments of travel when you're visiting these people, then don't complain about it to them because that does not reinforce positivity in what you're doing. Yeah. So if you're <laughs> making all these decisions and you're disrupting the ebb and flow of your family's events and <laughs> then you're complaining about it, that doesn't look good on you and it doesn't reinforce what you're doing. So stay hard and fast with what you, you're wanting to do. Stay strong in your stance, be who you want to be, make the decisions you want to make. And if you have complaints, write them down, talk to your partner about them. Call your best friend. I don't know, but don't voice them to the people that are already finding this weird behavior and already finding this to be something that they're complaining about on their end or they wish you could just eat normal food. I wish you could just eat this. I wish you could just be normal, whatever, right? Um, you guys get it, but lean in, take responsibility, um, do it with intention, do it out of love, have these hard conversations. Um, all the hard conversations that I had on the front end of these, this journey that I've started for myself that have just turned into a career and a profession and something I really, really enjoy doing and just overall something that takes care of my health. That all stemmed and has progressed through hard conversations throughout the years. Now I've reached a point and I'm sure Alex and Sue have families don't even ask questions anymore. They yeah. just assume like <laughs> he's got it covered. If he had something to complain about, if he had something to mention, He'd mention it. And so don't, you know, I'm not going to keep asking him if this is okay. You know, should we go here? It's just, yeah, he's fine. Um, he'll make the decision. And if he does make that decision, that's his decision. I'm not going to ask him about it. Um, but that all stems from having the tough conversations in the beginning. Yep. And don't eat like an asshole. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> if you take one thing away from this entire thing, do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. I, I'm, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, guys. <laughs>